Hey guys, my name is Ali Al Karaguli. I'm a systems engineer and a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. And in this video, I'm going to show you six electrical engineering project ideas. So by the end of this video, not only will you have six things that you can work on, uh, you'll have a better understanding of electrical engineering concepts and knowing how to apply them in these projects. And then I'm going to show you how you can put these projects on your resume or on your profile so that it can help you get an internship or a job potentially. So um, I'll be ranking them by difficulty. I'll be going from the easy, absolute easiest to the absolute most difficult. Um, now, and real quick, before we talk about the actual projects, let's talk about why you should even work on these projects. And there are three reasons why you should get started on projects. If you're uh, either an electrical engineering student or even a high school student trying to get started with EE, uh, one is that you get some experience to put in your resume. Obviously, that's important. Two is that you get an understanding on the physics and connect the theory to real life, which is very important. Three is that you figure out if this thing's even what you like, right? It's very important that you do that. Um, as early as possible. So um, the very first project, the beginner beginner project, uh, is actually this one. It's just a very basic electromagnet, right? All you're doing is you're taking a piece of copper wire, connecting it to a battery, wrapping it around a nail, and seeing what happens. Now, obviously, if you know if you, if you have taken a uh, very basic electromagnetic physics, you'll understand that by doing that, by passing the current through the coil, uh, you're inducing a magnetic field. Right, and then um, you know that the the stronger the voltage is, or the stronger the electrical pressure uh, you're applying, uh, the the stronger the electric field would be, and then the stronger the magnetic field will be, and as a result, you'll have a much stronger magnet. Now, this is one way uh, that you can increase the strength of the magnet. Actually, another way you can do it is by keeping the voltage the same uh, and just increasing the number of the turns. Right, um, you're basically um, not not playing around with how much uh, energy is coming out of the source, but you're basically manipulating the behavior of that electrical energy going through the coil. By doing that, you're changing the behavior of the magnetic field. Uh, this is something that's very important when you're working on electrical engineering projects, uh, is you don't want to just kind of do the project, not understand how it works, uh, and just kind of put it on your resume and move on. Like the whole idea of doing this project is so that you can understand, you learn something, you understand by doing, right? In electromagnetic physics, you take uh, you look at equations all day about um, I don't know like electric fields, magnetic fields, and electromagnetic induction. But when you're looking at it in terms of math and you're just kind of looking at it on paper, it's not the same as actually applying it to the real world and seeing it happen. So in this case, by increasing the number of the turns or by uh, you're, you're keeping the same battery, uh, you're basically going to have a stronger magnet. You'll notice that you'll be able to attract stronger pieces of metal, and that's the part that matters the most. So. Basically, this this again sums up this principle, the idea that as you're doing that, you can even, if you've used the right-hand rule in physics, you understand that by rotating the coil like this, the direction of the magnetic field will go like this. And this is how you determine the polarity, like the North Pole, the South Pole. Um, and again, very simple example, very simple project probably takes, I don't know, uh, two minutes, three minutes to make. But you can spend days or weeks trying to uh, develop a full understanding of the physics that underlies behind it. Uh, and this is, again, what I mean over here is that the reason all this behavior works, and this is the most important part of any project, is you start asking yourself, why? Why, why, why is this behavior happening this way? Uh, and you can trace it all the way back to Maxwell's equations. Okay, So that's pretty much it for the very first project. Again, very very easy, very simple. Anyone can do it. But I would argue that it's probably the most important one because it's the one that helps you get a really good understanding of electric fields and magnetic fields and the relationship between magnetic fields and currents. Um, now, the second one, a little bit slightly more difficult, uh, but again, still something very, very simple. Anyone can do it. Uh, it's just basically an LED circuit. Uh, you're basically taking a battery, connecting it to a resistor, to an LED. And then again, you're basically seeing what happens. Obviously, what's going to happen is that this LED is going to start flashing. Um, if you want to take it a bit more, uh, a, st a step further, instead of just connecting a resistor to an LED uh, and, and just having the LED be turned on, which is very boring, you can have the LED start flashing, right? Uh, now, there's the old school way of doing this, and then there's the new school way of doing this. The old school way of doing this is getting one of these chips, like 555 timer chips. Uh, it looks something like this. And basically connecting it, it looks it looks like this. It has a pinout, and you connect it. And then let's see, LED flashing circuit. Um, you would connect it to a bunch of resistors, a bunch of LEDs, and then you would have your LED blink um, towards the end as a result. Now, this is very old school. I think you should still do it because it's awesome, and these chips are extremely cheap. 
and you uh, you would need a breadboard. You would need this kind of uh, little device where it has a piece of uh, holes where you can put the wires in and there's metal that connects them. Uh, but more importantly, uh, is it will help you get a good understanding. And this is probably going to be the first chip uh, you can interface with. Now, the new school way is to just use an Arduino microcontroller and then just do like a blank function um, where, I don't know, you can kind of have that. Um, this is kind of the, the software approach where instead of just having the timer, uh, the 555 timer do, do it for you, you can do it with some code. But we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But again, if you want your LED to be a bit more sophisticated, um, you, you, you can, you can go ahead and do that. Now, again, these first three projects are extremely easy, extremely basic. We're about to get a little bit more advanced. The reason I go over them is because, um, without doing this, without doing the, like uh, very simple, boring stuff. Uh, you won't get a very good understanding of what's actually going on. So the electromagnetic magnet project would give you an understanding of, of magnetic fields and the relationships to currents and electric fields. But these two other projects with the flashing circuits uh, give you a very basic introduction to uh, like circuit, circuit theory uh, and resistors and, 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 and capacitors and LEDs um, and then uh, chips as well. Like having, how do you interface with a chip? How do you read the data sheet of a chip? How do you read the pinout of a chip? Uh, this is all very, very important stuff. Now, if you want to take things to the next level, uh, instead of just having um, uh, an, uh, just a basic LED flashing based on uh, on time, time sequence, uh, you can take that same Arduino uh, microcontroller board that we were talking about, which looks like this, looks like this, looks like that. Uh, you, didn't, you don't need all of them. You only need one, really. It's good enough to do uh, enough functionality. And you can order uh, like an LCD screen, uh, and then you can have some type of visual display Instead of just, again, one basic LED blinking, you can have a, an LCD display. There are actually kits you can buy on Amazon. Let's see, Arduino, a beginner kit. Um, and it would come with things like that. And I believe a lot of them will come with some uh, LCD screens. Um, and that some of them will come with some type of controllers. They come with all sorts of really cool stuff, maybe some potentiometers that you can play around. But one thing that you can really do, a project that I really love, uh, is having some type of uh, alarm clock or any any type of project that has some type of screen display. Why? Because I think that's a really good uh, interface between software and hardware, right? The nice thing about Arduino is it's, it's, a, it's the most efficient, uh, fastest uh, way for a beginner to start interfacing software with hardware. Obviously, there are other more advanced microcontrollers uh, and, and, and more sophisticated emb embedded systems uh, that you could... Uh, uh, start start working on to get some project experience with software hard, hardware interfaces. But what I really like about this is that um, again, it, it's it's very simple. The code is in C plus plus. It has a lot of uh, available libraries that you can that you can use, uh, and then you can find endless uh, uh, beginner kits either on Amazon or on eBay or or whatnot. Uh, so one project that I uh, really would encourage, for example, is making some type of alarm clock where you can adjust. The snooze feature, um, that's that's just one idea. But an inter intermediate project that is good and respectable, in my opinion, is something that involves hardware and software. Uh, and 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 is you can, you can demonstrate that the software works and that the hardware, obviously, is well laid out. Now, if you want to get even more advanced than that, instead of just having a basic uh, LED or an L uh, LCD or LED screen where it's kind of cheating because someone has already done the work for you, you can build your own like LED display by building an LED array yourself. Uh, and this is actually a really cool project. I actually remember building something similar to this when I was a I think sophomore uh, in college. I was building it to simulate the sun. Like I, I built an LED array uh, that was basically trying to simulate the behavior of the sun. So I had to first go take a look at what the sun looks like in terms of the spectrum of the wavelengths, then find a bunch of LEDs and then put them together. And then all that together would give me the same like wavelength response that you would get just from look, looking at the sun. But even that wasn't very cool in my opinion. Like it was, it was useful, but I think this would be something really cool where you can uh, write some software into Arduino and have this LED array give you all sorts of different shapes. You can start with very basic geometric shapes like squares, triangles, rectangles, uh, things of that nature. Um, and you can have it you can have it display really cool things now if you want to go even more advanced then i would go with this step and i would try to build an interface so sure it's alone it's good enough alone that you can uh, program the arduino microcontroller and the led array to do some cool stuff uh, it's going to require some software patterns 
of course, you can always cheat online and find some patterns that already exist. And in fact, I think that would be good to get started, like to just look at what other people have done and kind of reverse engineer their code and see why it has worked, why it has not worked. Um, but I think eventually, if you want to be even more badass, uh, in, in addition to building the hardware and, and, and the software that controls the LED array, what you can do is you can build some type of wireless uh, interface or like an app uh, on your phone that uses Bluetooth, for example, or that uses Wi-Fi. I, th I think Bluetooth would probably be the most likely one or whatever protocols are available on Arduino. You'd have to look that up. And basically, instead of just uh, writing code and running it and doing things of that nature, how cool would it be if there's some type of radio that would receive the commands and that would change these uh, uh, shapes in real time based on how you would adjust things on your app or whatever your input is. Uh, now, that would be a lot more advanced, a lot more sophisticated, especially if you build an app yourself. There are different ways to do it. You can do it using uh, React. You can do you, there, there's there's so many tools nowadays on 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 building apps, whether for iOS or for Android. I remember building an app for Android, uh, and I think it was much simpler back then. Uh, I believe for Apple. Uh, products you have to use Swift uh, for the language, but again, there are now uh, tools that you can use uh, where you can uh, design design things at least from the from the user perspective, from the UI UX perspective. And when you go to write the the code, you'll have all sorts of um, resources that kind of hold your hand and help you with that. So again, these are all so the these five projects we've kind of raced through them very quickly, but the but but the idea is. Um, you want to first get a good grasp of electromagnetic physics. That was what the first project's for. You want to get a good understanding of hardware and circuit theory. That's what a few projects after that were. You want to get a good grasp of software and learning how to write code. Basically, every electrical engineering should be able to write software. That's what the later projects were. And for this project, um, what I think would be really, really cool is to have some type of, is to start building on an interface, right? Because this is not just about engineering. This is not just about software and hardware. This is also about, uh, what what how do I want to use this thing? What would what would a user feel or experience uh, using this? Kind of goes into product design, which I think would be really cool. Now, the sixth and most important projects, in my opinion, uh, is none of what I just mentioned. Uh, is to actually because all, all these projects that I mentioned, these were my ideas based on what I think is useful. I think uh, the 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 best projects you can build uh, are three things. It's either a class project that can be useful, they can be used for your class, or an extracurricular project that you can use. Um, in, in, in a club or or or, or um, something of that nature. Uh, or ideally, you want to build something that solves a problem in real life. And I actually made an example about that in a separate video. It should be linked somewhere over here, so you should go ahead and watch it. Peace, love.